الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله بعد حياكم الله sisters I hope that you can hear properly voice is okay تمام I like to continue, inshallah, this chapter about magic, chapter 23. And inshallah, uh, I'll try to go also to the next chapter. Uh, this will be the last halqa before Ramadan. And next week, there will be halqa, but to review as a revision. So, I mean, this is uh, the last as a new chapter, but inshallah, next week, there will be halqa. I will review, inshallah. And I think the admin. Uh, post this uh, issue. Right. Right. Bab Majaf is sick. This chapter about magic, and we mentioned why he, uh, why the author put this chapter here in this his, in his book because magic. Uh, mainly depends on uh, the shirk billahi subhanahu wa ta'ala wal iyad billah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. We mentioned that there are types of magic, okay? Because, you know, it is very important to know the definition, to know the types, why? Because sometimes you'll find some scholars mention that magic is not shirk. Why? Because it depends what they, what do they define magic? Okay, so this is very important. Uh, let's go to page 199. 199. Abu Huraira ta'ala narrated that the Prophet said, Avoid the seven uh, destructive sins or great destructive sins. It was said, Oh Rasulullah, what are they? He said, Committing politics. Practicing sorcery, killing the life which Allah has forbidden except for a legal right, consuming, usually eating of an orphan's wealth, fleeing from the battlefield at the time of fighting and accusing innocent, chaste and believing women of adultery. So this is the hadith, page 199. <laughs> Uh, I will not uh, go through the whole hadith because, you know, if I explain these seven points, uh, this will take lecture lectures. Uh, you can find this in my channel. I, I did uh, some lectures, maybe 10 or 12 lectures about, about the seven destructive sin, uh, sins. You'll find these lectures in my channel. So what is the point here in this hadith, in this chapter? Because the author, the author wants to talk about magic, and this hadith mentioned the magic after the shirk. Billahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe someone asked, Sheikh, if you mentioned that magic is shirk, is a major sin and is shirk, so what is the point to mention magic after shirk? Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, ashirku billah, the first, the first one, ashirku billah, then he mentioned magic. The scholars say that ذكر الخاص بعد العام يدل على أهميته. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم sorry in Arabic language if there is something specific after something general it means that this one which is specific has something يعني importance. What do I mean? يعني شرك has many types many things يعني when you invoke other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is shirk. When you um, go to the grave and you make sujood for this grave, this is shirk. When you believe in the awliya, that they can't help you, this is shirk billah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, there are different types of shirk. But when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi mentioned magic after that, means that this is very important, which means, I mean, very dangerous. 
انت وي هاف ان ذا قران يعني فور اكزامبل من سوره البقره قل من كان عدوا لله وملائكته ورسله وجبريل وميكال الله سبحانه وتعالى منشن في سوره البقره قل من كان عدوا سوري من كان عدوا لله وملائكته ورسله وجبريل وميكال سو الله سبحانه وتعالى منشن انجلز ذن افتر ذات هي سبيسيفايد جبريل اند ميكائيل واي بيكوز جبريل وميكائيل very important angels maybe the most important the, mo- the the greatest angels okay the main the main angel is jibril the scholars mentioned that the best angel jibril alayhi salam طيب so this hadith tells us ijtanibu what is the start of this hadith ijtanibu what is the mean to ijtanibu to avoid okay and i think we mentioned this ijtanibu means to be in one's janib ijtanibu from the word janib جانب السايد اجتنب يعني تو بي ان وان سايد اند ذا ماجيك ان ذا اذر سايد اف يو ار ان فور اكزامبل ان بيج بليس يو شود بي ان وان سايد اند ذا ماجيك ذا اذر سايد فيري فار فروم فروم ات لايك الخمر الله سبحانه وتعالى سيد انما الخمر والميسر والانصاب والازلام رجس من عمل الشيطان فاجتنبوا افويد ات اوكي اند ذا وورد افويد ات از سترونجر ذان حرام ذا وورد حرام طيب so maybe to, uh, to drink this haram so is it okay to keep it like this and i'm sitting here this is okay the point is don't to drink it it is haram to drink this uh, this water yeah, for example طيب. but if i tell you avoid it it means don't keep it here you should throw it away and you should or you should go away from it so this hadith tells you to, to avoid magic what is the mean to avoid magic don't do magic Don't learn magic. Don't teach magic. Don't يعني, ask magic, uh, someone to do magic for you. Okay? You, sh- you should avoid all the ways of magic. طيب. And Jundub Marfu'an. Jundub narrated. Uh, the, uh, what is the, in Arabic it is? And Jundub Marfu'an. What is the meaning of Marfu'an? طيب. Marfu'an. If you remember, we mentioned the three things about the sayings. or the actions marfu mawquf maqtu marfu if it is related to the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is marfu if it is related to the companions mawquf if it is to the tabi'in or after tabi'in maqtu so when he said an jundub marfu'an he means this was said by the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam This was said by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The prescribed punishment of a sorcerer is a stroke with the sword. Then he said, related by Tirmidhi, who graded it as a hadith mawquf. Hadith mawquf. He said, يعني, uh, Tirmidhi said, the, uh, the, the authentic opinion that this hadith is mawquf. It was not said by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was said by the companion. What is the name of that companion? Jundub. Okay. But not Jundub na Abdullah al-Bajali. No, it is another Jundub called Jundub al-Khair. Jundub al-Khair. Okay. So we have this narration from a, a Sahabi. As a term he said, this is a saying by Sahabi. This is authentic by a Sahabi. Called Jundub radiyallahu ta'ala. What he said, the punishment is... ضربه بالسيف ضربه بالسيف طيب strike him with your sword uh, طيب he mentioned also another thing في صحيح البخاري عن بجالة ابن عبدة قال عمر الخطاب رضي الله تعالى sent us a message reading kill every sorcerer and every sorceress طيب they're open We killed three sorcerers. So this is the ruling of from Umar radiallahu ta'ala and to kill them, to kill the magician. And of course, uh, يعني, this decision okay, should be from the ruler because Umar radiallahu was the ruler. It is not for any one of us. We should be careful about this. Huh? We should be careful about it.
What do I mean? Yani, for example, I'm sitting here in masjid. Then my friend came to me and he is chatting with me. Uh, there is a person. Uh, he is magician. So I go with him and I kill. We kill this person. This is not right. Maybe he's not a magician. Okay. We should make sure about it. Or maybe people kill others. Okay. There's someone I hate. Then I go and I kill him. Then if they ask me why you killed him, because he is a magician. Okay. So we should be careful about taking the decision to kill or to do this punishment should be for the imam, for the government. We should be careful because we don't like the life, the life to be a mess. So this is, so now we mention something from Jundub and here Umar radiallahu ta'ala then Hafsa. Who is Hafsa? She's the daughter of Umar. Who is Hafsa? Also, she is the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, no, I, now I'm page two. Zero one, two zero one. حفص صح عن حفص أنها أمرت بقتل جارية بقتل جارية لها سحرتها فقتلت. طيب حفص gave an order to to kill one of her slave girls who bewitched her, and this slave girl was thus executed. Okay, and the, the author mentioned this is authentic, my Hafsa, radiallahu ta'ala. In addition, it is related that Jundub did the same. Jundub did the same. He also, yani he killed a magician. And according to Ahmed ibn Hanbal, the execution of sorcerers is authentically reported from three companions, namely Umar, Hafsa, and Jundub. Why he uh, put these narrations here? Because he wants to tell us the danger of magic. How? Because the companions killed them. Yani, yani even the, the, the scholars mention, okay, or many scholars mention that when the sorcerer, when the magician claims that I repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't accept the repentance from him. We should kill him. So if we, yani, for example, if the police station uh, caught this man or this woman, uh, magician, then uh, he said, uh, and they, they said, Khalas, we are going to kill you because this is your ruling in Islam. Then he said, Astaghfirullah wa I will repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Also, the police or the government should kill him. Why? They say this repentance between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But for us, we should kill him because... We don't trust him because suppose that he is lying, then if he escapes from us, then it will be a big trouble for the community. So the scholars, you will find sometimes they say his repentance is not accepted. What do they mean? They mean uh, they mean the the yani uh, for, for 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 people in front of us, but between him and Allah, any sin. If you repent, Allah subhanahu wa taala will accept it. Uh, and will forgive you. Let's go to the next chapter. Forms of sorcery. Qala Ahmed, Rahimullah. حدثنا محمد بن جعفر قال حدثنا عوف قال عن حيان حد قال حدثني قطن ابن قبيصة عن أبيه أنه سمع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إن الغيافة والطرق والطيرة من الجبت. طيب the author put the narration the full chain of this hadith but here in the English it is not the full it is from قطن ابن قبيصة related on his father's authority. That he heard the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Indeed, riyatha and tarq, uh, sorry, and uh, yes, tarq and tiyarah are acts of jibt. Sorry, we are in chapter twenty-four. We are in chapter twenty-four, two zero three, two zero three. Uh, please, sisters, I am drinking with my right hand. Okay, because last week, one of the brothers, he said, please, Sheikh, you should drink with your right hand, not your hand. 
okay, because the camera, okay, uh, those who are watching me in the Instagram, I think it's okay in Instagram, it is right hand, but in the Zoom, uh, it shows you it is left hand or the opposite, yeah, in one of them. I don't know, maybe the Instagram, but for Zoom, maybe it is correct. Huh? So I, uh, I'm right, this is my right hand, huh? I'm drinking with my right hand. Uh, yes, so he uh, he mentioned this hadith, uh, the chain. He mentioned the chain. But this hadith, uh, my scholar said it is not authentic. This hadith is not authentic. But as a meaning, this is correct meaning. As a meaning, this is correct meaning. Uh, what is the meaning of al-iyafa? He said here, Releasing some birds to foretell the future. This is Riyafa. Tark, practicing geomancy. And Tiara, being an evil omen, are acts of Jibt. Acts of Jibt. There is something related to the, the issue of uh, tarq. Okay, there is something related to a tarq. Uh, he said here, uh, yes, yes. Auf قال Auf رحم الله العيافة زجر الطير. What is mean for iyafa? Something related to the bird. Okay, yeah. And when you release the bird, you check the bird goes to the right, to the left, or the voice of the bird. Okay, you know, in some some places, some community they they used to. Yeah, for example, here in Kuwait, I don't know about your communities. Here in Kuwait, this is common, among, especially among the old people. If they hear something, yeah, yeah. For example, immediately when they hear knocking the door, you they hit something, immediately they say, khair, khair, may it be good. So, so yeah, what is the relation between knocking the door and saying khair? Uh, or uh, when they hear a bird, uh, they say also khair. One of the scholars were, uh, he was traveling with someone, then uh, they heard a bird crying, then, uh, this man said, khair. The scholar said, what is the relationship between the bird and it's khair, yani good or evil? By Allah, I will not travel with you. Because the Muslim, should be his heart should be attached with Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. If there is anything, I ask Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is very important. This is serious, uh, sisters. Uh, so this is about al uh, Al-Tarq. He said, uh, Okay, I think yes, here. Auf said, Iyafa means driving birds away, whereas Tark is div uh, div divination by means of lines and figures. There is, okay, we said this hadith is not authentic, but there are, uh, يعني, uh, the meaning is authentic. Uh, there is a hadith. In Sahih Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu said, كَانَ نَبِيِّ مِنَ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ خُطُّ فَمَنْ وَافَقَ خَطَّهُ فَدَكُ One of the Prophets, okay, used uh, 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 Sorry sister, I, I don't like to drink in front of you, but I'm drinking coffee because I want to be wake up. Because I had night duty, so I'm sleepy. Um, one of the prophets, uh, the authentic hadith, Sahih Muslim, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said, one of the prophets used to make khat. What, what is the meaning of khat? Khat, yani, yani sitting, for example, on the beach or on the desert and to make lines on the ground. They make lines, one line like this, this, the opposite side. Then to predict something. So the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, one of the prophets was doing that. One of the prophets was doing that. So if you know how to do it like that, Prophet, then it is okay. 
What does it mean hadith? The meaning of the hadith that doing the lines on the ground to predict the future, this is haram, not right, wrong, wrong. But one of the prophets was doing that. Allah, and which prophet, yeah, some scholars said this was Idris, alayhi salam. But if you know how to do it like that, the prophet, then it's okay. Tayyip, now, what do you understand from this statement? Do you understand that doing the lines halal or haram? Huh? What do you understand from the statement of the Prophet ﷺ? Yes, haram. Why? Why do I understand that it is haram? Because the Prophet ﷺ mentioned something that we don't know. Do you know how, what was the way of that Prophet? No. So it is impossible for us to know what was the way of that Prophet. So it is haram to do a khat. It is haram to do a khat. And I think we mentioned last week, you know, sometimes people, they read the lines here in your hand. Uh, uh, subhanallah, uh, people, sometimes you don't know from where they bring the information or they believe anything written in the books or they believe anything mentioned by the da'i. Uh, subhanallah, I was reading the books and some people think that, you know, the lines here, why we have lies here? They mention because this, you know the story of Yusuf alayhi salatu salam, when the, the wife of the king, she, she invited her friends and she gave every one a knife. Then she told Yusuf, come out, yalla. Sorry, come in. So when they saw Yusuf alayhi salatu salam, okay, khalas, they forget what is in their hand and they started to make, to cut their hands, okay, to make these cuts. So, you know, some people said, yes, what we have in our hands, in our palms, this is from the time of Yusuf alayhi salatu salam. And of course, this is not right. Strange things, brothers, please, sisters, don't believe anything. Don't believe anything, okay? Oh. Alaykum salam. Tayyip, well, well, jibt. Qal Hassan, rannatu shaytan, subhanallah. Well, Jibt, he said, Ranna to Shaytan. Al Hassan, Al Basri, one of the great Tabi'in. One of the great Tabi'in. Al Hassan, Al Basri, Abu Sa'id. He's one of the great Tabi'in, which means the generation after the companions. Jibt is the voice of devils. The voice of devils, Ranna Shaytan. And yeah, and one of them is the music, subhanAllah. Yes, your music, this is the sound of Shaytan. When you listen to music, Wallah, he will destroy your life. I, uh, yeah, sorry, Safullah. Yeah, what do I mean? This will spoil your heart. Listen to the music because you know sometimes people say, "No problem." I'm listening to, I'm praying my five prayers, and I'm reading my Quran, and also I'm listening to music every day, maybe half an hour, one hour. No problem with that. There is a problem, but sometimes you don't feel that that problem, and this is another problem. This is another problem. I mean, when you have a problem and you don't know you that you have a problem. Yeah, for example, many people, they have diabetes, they have hypertension, but they don't know. Okay, which is more dangerous when you know that you have diabetes or when you don't know that you have diabetes? For sure, if you don't know. Why? Because if I know that I have diabetes, if I know I have hypertension, then I will control my diet. I will go to the doctor, I will take my tablets. But if I don't know, خلاص, I will keep eating unhealthy food, sugar, uh, uh, fat, everything. Then I will be in big trouble. I will be in big trouble, subhanAllah. So please, sisters, avoid music. And be careful when you watch your, your mobile, okay? And now I check, for example, I go through my Instagram. Well, I, I feel very sad. I feel very sad. When I notice some brothers and sisters, they look practicing and they post يعني, something related to Islam. Maybe they post some clips of some shiukh, some hadith, but they add music for their post. So please, sisters, avoid music as much as you can. And inshallah, you can avoid music. Don't claim that we cannot, because you know, some people say, Sheikh, nowadays it is difficult. And music is everywhere. Remember, Allah says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Wallahi, if you live 
with the Quran, خلاص, you enjoy Quran. You'll forget music. Don't think that music is part of your life. You should avoid the music. And please also, if you are a teacher, don't use the subject. يعني, you know, sometimes you, you, you like to use some videos in the YouTube which have, which have music. If it is science, if it is English, okay? Well, why no need for that? No, Sheikh, but this is easier for the kids and easier for, no need for that. If there is haram, خلاص, haram is haram. And also, another point, يعني, يعني for those people, يعني the brothers or the sisters, if you are qualified to do some videos, uh, يعني give us the, uh, the replacement of the haram things. Okay, and for example, if I like to, uh, to learn uh, to, or to teach my children the, uh, the Arabic language, the letters, the, or English, the letters, the statements, okay? When I check, I, when I go to the videos, I will find many videos with, uh, with music. Most of them maybe with the music. So please try to do something without music. May Allah reward you. Yani imagine how, how much of reward you will get if you provide like these videos without music. But uh, the main point here, uh, sisters, that no doubt we can live without haram because some people think that nowadays we cannot live without haram. No, for sure you can live with, without haram. For sure. Allah says, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَةً The one who feels Allah, Allah will give him way out from any, uh, from any problem, any calamity. Uh, the above mentioned hadith is also related by Abu Dawood and Nasa'i and Ibn Hibban in his authentic book. He mentioned like that. So here in mission, and some points of the, the magic, some point of magic. Go to the page 206. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, if anyone acquires any knowledge of astrology, he acquires a branch of sorcery. He gets more as long as he continues to do so, related by Abu Dawood. Okay. Uh, I don't know why the translation, they are not translating everything. Okay, they are not translating everything. Uh, here, in page 206, he put related by Abu Dawood, but the Arabic version, it is said, Isnad Sahih, with authentic chain. يعني, uh, Allah alam why they did not put this, but uh, you know, you should be careful, sisters, that when you translate something, if you put this is translation of Kitab Tawheed, you should be uh, يعني, uh, precise, accurate. Okay, and everything. If you say this is translation, so you have to make it the same. But if you mention Wallahi with small changes, okay. And you yeah, and make a note that th this is the change here. You should be careful, طيب. So what is the meaning of the hadith here, sisters? من اقتبس شعبة من النجوم فقد اقتبس شعبة من السحر. طيب. Here, the author narrates this hadith, if anyone acquires any knowledge of astrology. The, the word here, من اختبس شعبة من النجوم. What is the meaning of النجوم? Nujum means uh, stars. So the one who takes any knowledge from stars, then he's taking a knowledge from, or uh, he's following a branch of magic. Inshallah, a ch a chapter will come to, mention, to speak more about this, but I think it's important to mention this here. Uh, I mean, the knowledge related, or, or if you take knowledge from the stars, if you take knowledge from the stars. Qatada, Ibn Da'am al-Sadusi, rahimahullah, one of the famous tabi'een, one of the famous tabi'een, famous also in tafsir. He said, خَلَقَ اللَّهُ النُّجُومِ لِثَلَاثِ Allah created stars for three things. What does he mean? He means, he means the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. وَلَقَدْ زَيَّنَ السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا بِمَصَابِيحِ So this is one of them. 
to beautify the sky, the stars. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them. He mentioned the Quran, number one, to beautify the sky as a decoration for the sky, subhanAllah. When it is night, okay, you are in the middle of the desert, okay, you are with, the, yeah, for example, your friend or your husband, or your father, your brother, you enjoy the sky when you see the stars. So Allah subhanahu wa created the stars, why? To beautify the sky. This is number one. Zina al-Sama. Number two, Rujum al shayateen What does it mean, Rujum al shayateen To kill the shayateen, the devils. To kill them, to burn them. As it came in the Quran, Rujum al shayateen Rujum, what's the mean Rujuman? Rujuman from the word Rajim. Rajim means to stone, stoning something. Rajim. Uh, number three, uh, as a guidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, وَعَلَامَاتُ Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَلَامَاتُ وَبِالنَّجْمِ هُمْ يَهْتَدُونَ Okay? They are, gui they are using the stars as guidance. What, what is the meaning of that? Yani for those who have the experience, okay, if it is night and you see this star, this is the, uh, you, you know, every star has a name or the main star, the big star ha have names. And by knowing these stars, you know the road or so you know the direction. This is north, this is east, this is west. Right? So, so these things are halal. Okay, these three points. Again, what are the three points? I think this is a good question for the exam. I hope that the admin can hear me. Qatada mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the stars for these three points. Okay, guidance, zina, beautification, decoration for the sky, rujum al to kill the devils. The devils, uh, I think we mentioned the hadith, the devils try to, sorry, the devils try to steal the, uh, some information from, the sky from the angels, the revelation. Then Qatada mentioned, and if anyone likes to get more than these three things, then he went astray. He went astray. What is the meaning of that? If you use the stars, or if you study the knowledge of the stars to know the future, uh, now we can see this star. This means. Uh, um, the rain will come or uh, one big country will will be defeated by another enemy okay it is haram it is haram not allowed طيب. so that's why the hadith here طيب. if anyone acquires any knowledge of astrology this means the fourth one not it doesn't mean this hadith doesn't mean the three types it means that other than the three types. Then you are taking, you are following a branch of magic. If you study more, then if you study more about the stars related to the future, then you are gaining more knowledge about more sihr, more magic. Another hadith in page. 207, sorry. Abu Ray radiallahu anhu narrated, uh, Abu Ray radiallahu anhu said, Man aqad uqda thumma nafatha fiya faqad sahar, wa man sahar faqad ashrakum ta'allaqa shay'an wukila ilayhi. Abu Ray radiallahu anhu narrated that, yani, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever ties a knot and then blows in it with the purpose of magic commits an act of polytheism. And whoever attaches an amulet will be left to its control. Uh, again, this hadith is not authentic, but the last part is authentic. This hadith, page one, sorry, 207. Again, as a meaning, yes, this is correct. As a meaning, this is correct. The one who's trying to make knot, leave. he makes knot by a string, a piece of cloth, and then to 
recite some something straight from the gym, then to blow, to spit, and this not, this is magic. This is magic. And if you do magic, then this is uh, this is shirk billah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he said, and uh, we, we spoke about this at the beginning, I think in chapter seven or chapter eight. If you attach your heart to anything, then Allah will leave you with that. If it is an amulet, if it is a stone, if it is a tree, then Allah will leave it with that, with, with, what you love and what you, your heart is attached with, which means this is haram. Your heart should be attached with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It, it doesn't mean that it is haram to do anything. Yeah, for example, this honey doesn't mean that it is not allowed to take medicine. It is not allowed to go to the doctor. No, it is, you, are, you are allowed to go to the doctor. It may be wajib to go to the doctor, to see a doctor. But when you take medicine from the doctor, you should believe that the cure from Allah, not from the doctor. The cure from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he mentioned hadith, this is Ibn Mas'ud, page 209, narrated that the Prophet said, should I inform you about al-abd, uh, between brackets, it is written sorcery. But it should not be written like this. Okay? They said, the, the, the people, they ask, Okay, what's, what is it? the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said? It is malicious gossip which creates dissension amongst people. Al Ad here and Namima Al Kala Bain and Nas. Okay, so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said mentioned Al Ad and he told us what is the definition of Al Ad, like Al Riba. He mentioned al ghiba and also he told us what is the definition of al ghiba backbiting. And this is very important to take the definition from the Prophet ﷺ directly, not from any of the scholars, not any of the scholars or any book. So here, what is the meaning of al-adh? He gave us definition, al-qala bayna al-nas. What is the meaning of al-qala bayna al-nas? For example, you are here sitting with a group of women, group of sisters, meeting them, tea, coffee, Chocolate, cheesecake, donut, whatever you are eating, nuts. Okay. After you finish, you went to another group. Okay. But different food. Then you mentioned to the second group that I was there and with the first group, and they said about you this, 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 this. Okay. So now you start to backbite and you intend to create a trouble between the two groups, or maybe not two groups, maybe two persons. This is called ananima, and this is one of the major sins, and it is worse than backbiting, it is worse than riba. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned another hadith, this act, this act doesn't shave the head, it shaves your religion. Now, what is the point of having this hadith in this chapter? Okay, our chapter about magic, types of magic, and this hadith about the tongue, manners of tongue. Okay, the scholar said the author posts this hadith here to tell you that anemia is very dangerous and it works like magic. It works like magic. In Namima, works like magic, which means, if you remember, we mentioned the ayah last week. وَمَا هُمْ بِضَارِينَ بِهِ مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Okay. وَيَتَعَلَّمُونَ مِنُهُ مَا يُفَرِّقُونَ بِهِ بَيْنَ الْمَرِي وَزَوْجِهِ What is the main, or, or sorry, maybe I did not mention this. What is the main job of magicians? What is their main goal? Their main aim is to make the man to divorce his wife to break the bonds among people, okay? This is the main uh, job of the magician. They do many things wrong, haram, 
everything they do haram okay but the main job is to break the bonds to cut the relations طيب so here the author wants to tell us that العض or النميمة works like magic it cut the relations like magic cut the relation but subhanallah النميمة cuts the relation uh, without shirk but the magic with shirk Allah المستعان Then he mentioned the hadith, page 210, Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, inna min al-bayani la sihra, some eloquent speech has the influence of magic. Inna min al-bayani la sihra. What does it mean bayan? When you speak, uh, when you give a speech in a way very clear, attractive, people listen to you. Subhanallah. طيب. So some of some of the speeches like magic, or some of the speeches work like magic. طيب. What is the meaning of that? Some scholars say the hadith means that the uh, يعني, the Prophet وسلم, wants to praise the people who are speaking a nice way. Yeah, they are speaking a nice way attractive way, making people to listen, making people to follow. So this works like magic. يعني, makes people to follow you in a very soft way. And other scholars said, no, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned this hadith to criticize, to dispraise them. He wants to say that they, those who are speaking a nice way to change the haqq. Like, what is the famous example? Lawyers, I hope there are no lawyers with us. Of course, I don't mean this is haram. If they are bad, if they are doing bad, then they are bad. If they are doing good, they are good. But this is common. This is common. Lawyers, okay, usually they speak in a nice way to save the, 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 their people. Okay, I go to the lawyer and I pay him money. 1,000 dinar, 10,000 dinar. Then this lawyer will do everything to defend me, to save me from the jail. In a wrong way, in a halal way, it doesn't matter for him. Of course, I don't mean all of them, no, but this is very common, many of them. So when he goes to the court, speaking in front of the judge, he will speak in a way to attract the judge and to make the judge to believe him. So this is... A, يعني something like magic. Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said إن من البيان لسحرا. Sometimes the way of speech speaking like magic. طيب. Not only lawyers. Also sometimes when you go to the market, some people who are يعني you know some some sale the sale man. Okay. You know sometimes يعني I come home. طيب. I ask myself, okay, why, why did I buy this and this? Okay, no need for that. And also the price. But why I bought that? Because subhanAllah, when I went to the shop, the man started to speak about his item and to explain in a very nice way. And he, and he convinced me to buy it. And no need at all for this item. So subhanAllah, you notice some people, mashallah, okay, especially, especially those who are, who are working in the showroom to sell cars, okay? Some of them, MashaAllah, when you go to them, they explain, they speak about the car in, in details and to the point. They, yani, uh, yani, you notice maybe some, some of them, they ask you, okay, for what you need the car? The car, this is for you or for your wife or your son, your daughter, your family, okay? Uh, then, he knows how to uh, attract you. Right? So the hadith can mean the hadith can mean this is bad, or the hadith can mean this is wrong. This is uh, good. Right? So uh, the author called uh, he put this hadith here to tell you, Subhanallah, there are certain things like magic. They work like magic, but they are not haram, or if they are not haram, they are not shirk. Okay. 
and by that we finish the chapter of Sihr. We finish chapter 24. So, uh, inshallah, next week will be a revision for all what we uh, done, what what we we, we did. Even I. Uh, I don't know what about the, the hadith, sorry, the, the exam. Zakmullah Khair, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muhammad. Shall I see some of the questions now? Okay. And I noticed, sister, I noticed some of you write questions during the class. Sorry, I did not read them. Sorry. Yeah, questions? Questions? No questions? Let me change position, then I can read the question. Okay. Salam, Sheikh. I can say, but I missed the question. Can we get the video? You check with the admin. Is it also haram to backbite kafirun? Wallahi, shuf. Look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. Uh, in Surah Al-Hujurat, وَلَا يَتَّبْ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا So the ayah talks about the Muslim, the Muslim brother, Muslim sister. Okay, if you notice the ayat in Surah Al-Hujurat, it starts with, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمِنُوا So it talks about the Muslims, about the believers. So we can understand from the ayah, this is about the Muslims. So it is not allowed to back by the Muslim. So we can understand that, as some scholars mentioned, for the non-Muslims, this is okay, or this is not included. But we need to protect our tongue, okay? Because imagine, especially for those who are who live in a non-Muslim country, okay? So maybe your neighbor, your colleague at work or in the school, uh, the maid, the, the friends, many of them non-Muslims. So then, if I tell you, okay, this is allowed allowed to back by the non-Muslims. So now you are backbiting uh, your neighbor, your friend, and maybe your brother. Maybe your brother is non-Muslim, your sister non-Muslim, your parents non-Muslims. So what will happen? Khalas, your heart will used will will use to use to backbite. Then this will make it easier for you to to do it with the Muslims. So to be safe, please avoid backbiting Muslims, non-Muslims, young, adult. Okay. Can you say difference between the word namima and al ad? The Prophet ﷺ defined al ad as namima. He said, "Atadruna al ad and al namima al qala bain al nas." So he defined it. Yeah. But as if you mean as linguistic meaning, sorry, I don't mean that. Uh, could you please remind me? Me the right way to say la ilaha illallah. We have to avoid kind of pronunciation. Spoke about it in the beginning of the first lessons. Jazakallah khair. Sorry, what did I say about la ilaha illallah? Sorry, I cannot remember what I said about la ilaha. Sorry, I forgot. Okay. I spoke about the meaning of la ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Okay. Or if you, yes. Uh, maybe if you mean uh, when you teach someone the shahada, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Not ashhadu anna la ilaha illallah. It's better you say, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Because I noticed some people who are working da'wah, when they give shahada to others, they say, Come 
Okay, when they teach people the shahada, they tell them, Ashhadu al anna la ilaha illallah. That's better you say, Ashhadu al la ilaha illallah. And also, no need to raise your finger. I know it is very common. No need to raise your finger. I mean, if you are telling someone to give the, to give him the shahada, uh, to teach him the shahada, no need to raise finger. Because you can't stand like this. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. So the first one, ashhadu anna. The second, ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Maybe you mean this. My, my husband brought sahir for me and kids. My kids used to wear it. And I didn't accept to wear it. It's not in my life anymore, but my kids not acting normal. Please advise. If there, of course, if there is sihr, you, you have to stop sihr. You have to protect your, uh, yani if your husband is Muslim, you should tell him, you should teach him what is haram. Uh, to, to use the sihr, haram, magic haram, the amulet haram. Okay, if you like to protect your children, your family, you should be attached. Heart should be attached with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the akkar, ayatul kursi, muawwidat, these things. Okay, this is wallahi very dangerous, very dangerous. Do it in a wise way. Animals who communicate with Muslim jinn, is it okay? How can you know if this is a Muslim jinn or not? This is a, a big problem. My husband listened to the music. May Allah guide him. Not only your husband, many Muslims listen to the music and they post the music. Make, Allah, make dua for them, may Allah guide them. And also, yani sisters, one of the points, one of the main points why we are doing haram, I mean, why many Muslims are doing haram, because we are not using our time in a proper way. We are away from the Quran. We, feel, we find it very difficult to spend 10 minutes with the Quran. Wallahi, we find it very difficult. I mean, many Muslims, not all Muslims. Difficult to with, stay with the Quran 10 minutes, to open the Quran 10 minutes, you read 10 pages, five pages, difficult. But you listen to when uh, you watch one movie, when music, okay, one hour, two hours, or even the nasheed, the nasheed without the music. Okay, I am happy and I'm, I am ready to listen to five, six nasheed, spending one hour, two hours. So let's fill our heart with the Quran, with the hadith. Of course, I don't mean 24 hours, but try to read more, listen more. Okay, this will be uh, helpful to leave the music. Okay, and also find good friends and also try to use the time. I mean, sometimes you are sitting with your family and you are not happy. Why? Because my family, my parents, my khala, my amma, uh, auntie and uncles, they are listen, watching that TV and music. Okay? Try to find something else halal as a replacement. Start to speak about stories of the prophets, story of the Bible for Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, stories of the companions. Okay? Well, I, inshallah, yani, they will listen and they will leave the haram. Uh, I find I am suddenly disinterested in worship. Although I have been a person who enjoyed worship, I offer salah regularly, but don't want to do anything else, please help me to overcome this. May Allah help you to overcome this, and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma uh, habib ilayna al-Iman, this is a great dua, Allahumma habib ilayna al-Iman, wa zayyinhu fi qulubina, wa karrab ilayna al-kufra, wa kusuq al-isyan, ja'alina Allahumma al-rashidin. Also, make dua, Allahumma inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husn ibadat. Okay, so you make a dua. The other thing, uh, not necessary that you hate the worship or you are not interested in worship like before because of magic or because of evil eye, maybe because of a sin. Yes, maybe I change my bank from Islamic bank to a riba bank. Maybe I change my job from halal job to haram job. So now my income is haram. Okay, so maybe there is something in my life. So you have to make sure about your sins. It may be uh, magic, but you have to make sure everything in your life. طيب? So be, be sure about your adhkar, your salah, طيب? avoid the haram. Inshallah, Allah will cure you. Means bite? No, no, no. no. Al-abh, not bite. 
العض عين ضاد هاء أتدرون ما العض أوكي العض عين ضاد هاء العض هو أتدرون ما العض هو so there is ها at the end so it is not bite okay well I yeah this is this is the problem okay when you take a book fully English nothing in Arabic okay مشكلة والله مشكلة nothing in Arabic is it allowed to read منزل specific portions sorry I do not understand this Isa alayhi salam is not part of the shahab, shahada. Not, yani not wajib, okay? Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, ashhadu an Muhammad Rasulullah, this is enough, okay? But if you say, yani, you know, sometimes you notice the scholars, they, if the person is a Christian, they add, ashhadu an, ashhadu an Isa Abdullah wa Rasulullah, okay? But if the person is Hindu, Jew, okay? يعني أو أثيست، أوكي أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله شن محمد رسول الله إنه عليه الصلاة والسلام. How to avoid shaitan's whisper negative thoughts؟ أوكي قرآن إيمان دعاء all these things will help you all these things will help you and as I mentioned before we need to take care of two points sometimes the disease or sometimes the issue because of a disease. So we need to seek for treatment. And sometimes it is a faith problem, okay? So that's why you need uh, sometimes both ways. Zat Malkhair sisters, I know I missed many questions, but uh, inshallah you can send the question in Telegram or uh, direct message in my uh, Instagram or uh, YouTube channel. Jazakumullah khairan, salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.